One of my dream cars is the Porsche Carrera GT. And it can go from zero to 100 kilometers per hour in 3.5 seconds, all thanks to its 603 horsepower engine and curb weight of about 3,000 pounds. Compare that with my current car, a Toyota Corolla, which has a 132 horsepower engine and weighs about 3,100 pounds. Not only does the Porsche have four times more horsepower than my Corolla, but it also weighs about 100 pounds less. The Porsche Carrera GT is a perfect example of how to make a car drive faster. First, increase the power of the engine produces, and second, remove any unnecessary items to make the car as light as possible. The second option is often the easiest, fastest, and cheapest way to speed up a car. Rip out the sound system, remove the bits of junk from the trunk, and if you already have the need for speed, pull out the rear seat. The 100 pound weight loss will make the car accelerate a tiny bit quicker. The same can be said of user onboarding. When it's bloated and has too many unnecessary steps, new users will abandon an app and leave it for good. Users have little to no patience to read long directions and no time for steep learning curves. The default is to find the easiest and quickest path. Hey, it's Family John, Managing Director at Product Lead, and in this video, I'll show you how the Product Lead team and I reduce the time to value of our clients. Now, we use a framework called the Bowling Alley Framework. In 10 pin bowling, that's when all pins are knocked down with a bowling ball. Now, it sounds straightforward, right? If you played bowling before, you know how complicated and hard that is. The narrow oil bowling lane is 4.15 inches, and the 10 pins are 60 feet away from you. On both sides of the lanes are gutters. The goal is to roll a heavy ball straight down the lane to knock down as many pins as possible. A strike is when all of the 10 pins are hit on the first try. A spare is when no pins are left standing after the second try. If you're new to bowling, you'll quickly realize how hard and frustrating it is to hit any pins at all. Chances are the majority of your balls will end up in the gutter like mine. That's where gutter bumpers come into play. They block the balls from falling into the gutter to give you some assurance that some of the pins will actually be hit. And when it comes to user onboarding, bumpers help new users achieve their first strike. Now bumpers include conversational triggers such as onboarding emails, SMS, browser notifications, and in-app triggers such as welcome messages, product tours, and progress bars. I'll be covering these bumpers more in another video, but for now, it's time to identify the path that will help users achieve their first strike. If you watch professional bowlers, you'll notice how they curve the ball down the lane. This allows them to find a sweet spot that results in a strike. This is for pros though. Beginners need to learn how to roll the ball straight down the lane first and avoid the gutter. In user onboarding, this is called straight line onboarding. It's a minimum number of steps users need to take to achieve their first strike. In my experience, most onboarding experiences are anything but a straight line. Well over 30% of them are extra and not needed and end up creating more friction for new users than necessary. So how do you create a straight line onboarding experience. Creating a straight line onboarding experience is critical in getting more of your users to experience a product's value. You're in a race against time. The goal is to decrease the time to value or TTV as short as possible because a result of short time to value means customers receive faster return on their investment for the time. And that means that they are more likely to stick around. With this in mind, here are three steps to building your own straight line onboarding experience. So how do you build your straight line onboarding experience? To help you visualize this, I'll be going through the steps to develop the straight line onboarding of a fictional online party invitation tool that I'll call Party Parrot. First is to map out your onboarding path. First step is to sign up for your product as if it's your first time. Now it's probably been a while since you've done that. More likely than not, it's been a while that since anyone in your company has done this at all. The goal is to come in with a fresh perspective and map out each step in the user onboarding before they become highly engaged users. To do this, you'll want to go beyond filling in the form on your site. Go through the motion of signing up to study the first impression of your product, whether that's a Google search, paid ad, blog post, or email invitation. For the remaining of the steps, I'll use Party Parrot as an example. Let's say the current onboarding path 
from their site looks something like this. First step, enter email address. Second, enter name. Third, enter password. Fourth, click create account. Fifth, confirm your email address. Six, sign back in. Seven, click create new invitation. Eight, select a party invitation template. Nine, add an image for the party. 10, add the description of the party. 11, add the date, time for the party. 12, add the location of the party. 13, save the online invitation. 14, add each email address of your friends. 15, send the online party invitation. And already you can tell that's a mouthful. The second is to evaluate each of the onboarding steps. Here you wanna evaluate each onboarding step for three main components. First is necessity, second is ease, and third is simplicity. Let's talk about the necessity. We wanna remove or delay any steps that don't lead to the first strike. Each step in the onboarding path is yet another opportunity for users to drop off. Go back to your onboarding path and evaluate if the value of each step outweighs the risk that they pose of users dropping off. Any steps that add more friction for users to achieve the first strike should be removed or delayed. Use green, yellow, and red labels to easily identify where each step fall in the onboarding process. Green labels are steps that are absolutely necessary for new users to achieve the first strike. This could be asking for an email address during the signup process. Yellow labels are steps that can be delayed after the first strike, like setting up an advanced feature or running split tests. And red labels are steps that can be removed completely. This could be adding a backup email address or asking for a nickname when setting up their account. Do these steps collaboratively with the onboarding team. Ask each team member to label each step on their own first, then go through each step together to identify which ones are necessary. Moving the red and yellow steps are imperative for building a straight line onboarding experience so more users achieve the first strike. Now let's go back to party parrot and evaluate each step. That's step five, confirming the email address, help new users accomplish their immediate goal of sending online invitations. This step is one of the biggest onboarding conversion killers. So let's get rid of step five. As a result of this, users don't have to sign back in, which is step six. For step nine, does someone really need to add an image to send out party invites? One could argue that if the party invitation templates are well-designed, users might not need to add a photo. Without any data, let's remove this step for now. Step 13, save online invitation, could be replaced with an autosave feature. It might seem small, but anything you can do to relieve people from performing another step could help improve new users achieving the first strike. Imagine the pain of manually entering the email address of each of your friends. That's why it makes more sense to replace step 14 with a unique invitation like users can easily send out. We've now narrowed the touch points down to the following steps. One, enter email address. Two, enter name. Three, enter password. Four, click create account. Five, click create new invitation. Six, select a party invitation template. Seven, add a description for the party. Eight, add a date and time for the party. Nine, add the location of the party. 10, share ready to go party invitation link. Are there any steps in your onboarding that can be removed or delayed after the first track? Think about it. The second thing is ease. Reorganize steps from easiest parties. Baby steps are easier than large leaps. It's much more painless to commit to a small task at first and then gradually increase the difficulty. Imagine trying to run a marathon if you've never even run five miles in your life. The principle of commitment and consistency states that the smaller the initial ask from someone, the more likely they are to agree to bigger requests. This principle can be applied to user onboarding by reorganizing the steps from easiest to hardest. If you played any video game like Super Mario, you've also seen this in action. Usually they start with showing users core actions that are easy. For Super Mario, this consists of moving forward, jumping, picking a mushroom, destroying a Koopa. As you become more familiar with the game, you learn new skills that are harder, such as swimming, shooting fireballs, and running jumps. The same principle can be applied to user onboarding. First, show core features of the product that users need to accomplish their customer job. As users become familiar with your product, unveil new options. This maintains simplicity for new users and brings power to advance users. Here's the onboarding path for Party Parrot again. For steps one and two, enter email address and enter name. Which one is an easier request to complete? 
most likely asking for a name. So flip them around. We could probably take this a step further and ask users to create an account after they've already picked a party invitation template and filled in the details of their party. This is the sunk cost effect in action. When people invest time, money, or effort into something, they're motivated to make it work. Investing in the customization of their party invitations, users are more likely to create their accounts. With this concept in place, we can replace step five with click create an account to save your invite. We now shrunk Party Parrot's onboarding path by 33% from 15 steps to 10 steps. Without unnecessary steps to bog down new users, more people will experience their first try. For your onboarding, are there any steps you can reorganize from easiest to hardest? The third thing you want to evaluate is simplicity. Show fewer options and break down complex signup and setup processes into smaller steps. There are situations where it's not possible to remove or delay the bottlenecks in the user onboarding experience. In that case, simplify as much as possible. One thing you can do is show fewer fields or steps. More choices leads to user becoming overwhelmed and abandoning their signup altogether. Take for instance, the following form that has more than 20 fields. Now, would you sign up for a product like this? For me, heck no, but I understand the intention. They're probably trying to learn more information about new users so that they can qualify them. Come on, did they really need to ask for your suffix? Really? Now let's give them the benefit of a doubt and say all of these fields are absolutely necessary to experience the value of the product. Simplicity can still be achieved with a few tweaks. First, consider a concept called progressive disclosure where only a few essential options are shown to users, but a broader set is displayed upon requests. Instead of cramming all of the information in one overlay page or setup wizard that almost everyone will ignore, guide users one step at a time by showing fewer options. Whatever information you present should be contextual, relevant, and immediate. The second approach to simplify complex forms is to break them down into multiple pages. This is something that Shopify achieves in their signup process. By using a multi-step signup process, users only see the first four fields at the first page and then the rest after this. This is another example of the principle of commitment and consistency in action. By breaking down the signup page into two pages and moving the majority of the fields to the final page, Shopify's signup process is much more manageable. Is there a way to show fewer options through progressive disclosure? Are there complex processes in your onboarding that could be broken up into smaller steps? The final step to designing your straight line onboarding is to finalize it. Now back to those color-coded labels. Once you've labeled each step in the onboarding path, gather those green ones together. This is the first iteration of your straight line onboarding because they are the steps users need to take to experience a product's value. Again, here's a straight line onboarding for Party Parrot. One, select a party invitation template. Two, add a description for the party. Three, add the date and time for the party. Four, add the location of the party. Five, click create an account and save your invite. Six, enter your name. Seven, enter your email address. Eight, enter your password. Nine, click create an account. Ten, share ready to go party invitation link. It's important to finalize this list with each team within your company. Everyone from product to engineering to customer success should have a say. Do they agree with each of the necessary steps for users to achieve the desired outcome? Would they add back in steps that were you've removed or delayed? Would they remove any steps that's still there? Well, that's it for now. Before I leave, I want to remind you that this content is an excerpt from the upcoming book that I've written with Wes Bush called Eureka, how to onboard new users and turn them into lifelong customers. You can download the first chapter for free and join the waitlist at productlad.com forward slash Eureka. If you found this content and video valuable, kindly share it with your colleague. And don't forget to also subscribe so you don't miss out on new videos that help you grow your business faster with Product Lead Growth. Well, that's all for this video. This is Family John, Managing Director at Product Lead. Happy growing and see you in the next video. Bye.